Yeah, today's a, today's a big day. Very historic moment for our club. It's been a long time coming. Match 17, season one, headed into our first sellout. Couldn't be more proud of, of the team here. A great group of people that have worked very, very hard to put this on and to, to get to this moment. A lot of emotion into today and a lot of great feelings. We'll obviously, a lot of tension uh, on the field and we want to put on a great show off the field. But uh, to get to the moment where we're, we have a sellout crowd here in Monterey, it's just amazing. With a sold out crowd, I'm actually really excited to hear what it's going to hear like, like sitting on the bench. It's our last home game, but we've got two more on the road, hopefully more. At the time, we probably beat every East team that we've played so far. I'm going to beat these Giants, show the whole league that we're here in the playoff situation. We're ready to go and send the fans off with a great gift to end the season. And guys were ready, guys were focused. That's how the first half started. Up on the edge of the box, Boone slips it through for Sam Guido, Guido, upper oh. corner! It's Monterey with the lead. We were winning one zero at half, but then Tampa switched the whole lineup. It made three substitutions, changed their whole team. And we did the same thing. We saw that and we didn't really adjust. First time here is a Golasso! Tampa Bay has leveled things. Done. Clip to the back post, it's a go-ahead goal! And Tampa Bay, so outplayed played in the first half, have a lead in Seaside. While the region is well known for its history and beautiful scenery, Monterey County had not housed a professional sports franchise for what seemed like generations. In its distant past, on what is now Cardinale Stadium, Freeman Field was home to the Fort Ord Warriors, a semi-professional football team made up of service members stationed at the Fort Ord Army Base in the 1950s. Mike DeGuilio, president of Monterey Bay Football Club, understood the importance and challenges of renovating a historic site for a fitting and modern home field advantage. I think, you know, certainly there's always challenges that you're going to go through with a new club and a new team and a new stadium. I mean, we were a startup in every sense of the words. We started with nothing and built it to what it is today. So there's a great sense of satisfaction in doing that. But you know, there's going to be some really, really tough time. With growth, there's always, uh, there's always pain and we, we felt it, but we shared the heavy lifting and um, it was all worth it in the end. We're very, very rewarded. With the season fast approaching, a team yet to be fully assembled, and a stadium in the midst of a much needed restoration, Monterey Bay FC Sporting Director Frank Yallop had a difficult task ahead of him. I think that when you're putting together a unit uh, of players sort of quickly, and really the scouting part of things, it's never easy to attract a player. That's the, the, we have no stadium, we have no locker rooms, and I'm trying to attract players to come to, come to Monterey and, and believe in, in the project and what I'm doing. Building a roster from scratch requires a lot of patience, but most importantly, it requires identity. A successful club will always take after and look to its captain. And Frank Yallop may have found that in USL veteran defender, Hugh Roberts. I've been on the East Coast for eight years on my nine, and you know, Frank hit me up, but I took it with a grain of salt, honestly, it was just, so yeah, I told him I wanted to win and he's, told me some guys on the roster, I was like, all right, let's, I'll, I'm gonna take this chance. After various player tryouts, free agent pitches, and eventual signings, an official Monterey Bay FC roster is ready and fit to begin on what many hope to be a rewarding first year. I knew that we had good players. I just had to you know, figure out what system to play what suited our players the best, build in belief. For a group that has never played a full professional game together, building belief is not something that happens overnight. And with the inaugural season on the horizon, Monterey Bay FC would begin their campaign on the road for seven games. That's a month and a half before returning home. 
if I'm going to be honest, I think you couldn't have made it more difficult on our guys and our team. I mean, we all kind of said, you know, it's going to be a great bonding experience for everyone. But if you really think about it logistically, to be on the road for seven out of eight weeks, uh, no home stadium, um, the guys practicing in, in, on the grass pitch across the parking lot. I, you know, we knew we, there was going to be some obstacles, but we couldn't have put the guys in a in much more of a tough situation. Expectations coming in, I would say they're actually a little different between the club and the players. So I would say maybe the club had low expectations for our first inaugural team. Even for me, I've never been in an inaugural team, so this is a brand new experience for me as well. We had high expectations because, you know, we came through preseason, we saw all our quality. The first preseason game, we beat the Earthquakes first team, all their starters. We, I not want to say dominated, but we had a very good game, and we were like, man, okay, we're here. And then we, two weeks, and then the Earthquake called us again next week, and they wanted to play us again, beat them again. So we were like, we're here, now. we're good. So that was our standard. Other games were a little more tougher for us. We were, you know, a little full of ourselves after beating the Earthquakes. Took our foot off the gas pedal. Obviously, you know, we're a new team. We've never played with each other. There was not really a chemistry at the beginning of the season. We didn't even have a stadium. We were just traveling to these clubs that knew we were like, you know, underdogs. It was our first year and they knew they could battle against us. Final whistle. Monterey Bay FC with the franchise's first ever win in USL Championship and it's one they won't soon forget. In our first inaugural game, thought things were going to turn around, then boom, we lose three or four in a row again. Monterey Bay trying to snap a four-game losing skid. Some of the toughest things was finding our identity. But I realized over the time, as a, I do have a younger team, they were just inexperienced. For a lot of them, this is their first time ever playing consistent minutes, so they're just happy to be on the field. But that's not good enough for me. Like, we got to turn the actual players into winners, which is tough to do sometimes. Monterey Bay trying to snap a four-game losing skid. We knew in the back of our mind how good we were. And also another thing is we had a very good locker room too. That was probably the common denominator of this whole thing. We didn't have a good locker room when we were losing seven games in a row. The whole season probably would have hit the fan. Well, I think if you look at the way the team performed this year, seven away games in a row to start the season out. Players don't know me, I don't know the players, so we're starting to get to know each other. I never lost faith in any of the players and I knew that we would come good at some point. After a tough spell on the road, coming back to the comforts of home and a completed state-of-the-art stadium was a major boost to the team's efforts in turning the season around. So a lot of this stuff I took in for myself as the captain, and yeah, how do I turn my team around? It probably wasn't until I had a players meeting with the, with the team. Short-term miles, it was like win eight out of the next 10, beat every East Coast team, stay undefeated at home, win ugly if we have to. Long-term was like make playoffs. And the Cardinale Stadium debut is underway. So it fixed our mindset so now we can actually see something tangible. Oh, a shot is fired in! A screamer from Walmer Martinez! The day Monterey Bay announced themselves to the USL Championship. I'm not going to say it was from that meeting, but literally from then on, like we just we went on an eight-game unbeaten streak, five wins in a row. Everything just aligned from the beginning because we knew how good we were. It was us finding ourselves, finding our identity. How about that star when you're trying to stop a four-game losing streak? I think the spell in the middle of the season, we were a really well-oiled machine that was really playing some really good football. I was really proud of the guys, what they were doing, and we were just doing really, really well. Newton punches away, Rebelor has scored! We knew we could do more than what we did. We beat top teams in every conference. These are top teams that, you know, people never expected us to beat. Gleadal, Boone, 2-0, brilliantly done. When we went out there, it really showed that, you know, we could compete at, with the biggest teams, uh, you know, the favorite teams. Valeski, 5-0, sensational. More tremendous team play from Monterey Bay. They're right there and they're closing in on that playoff space. With a potential playoff spot on the line and critical time running out, Monterey Bay FC continues to press for an equalizing goal. But Tampa Bay has hopes of being the spoiler. Maybe it was a little bit of 
you know, just being a little overzealous or impatient because we were pressing for this goal so much, we wanted it so bad that when their second goal happened, it was like a gut punch to us that took the wind out of us where now we realize we're losing two to one when we had this game in our bag and we needed to win this game for playoffs. Full time from Cardinale Stadium, Tampa Bay Rowdies gets a 2-1 win. That's, I think our game against Tampa, we played well enough to win the game. Um, but again, I just I was really proud of the way we've gone about it this year and um, we've never took a step back from anybody and we won't. But at home, I think the, the, the fans who've paid to come see us deserve to see us trying our best to score and, and entertain them. We're not always going to end up on top, but it's, it's how do we stick together and, and what kind of effort do we put forth? And I thought the effort there from everybody was, was fantastic. And I think the fans, you know, ultimately um, were rewarded with a really, really great match. You know, we'll build off that. Yeah, well, I think if you, if you sort of step back, you know, 10, 12 months when we first started, no one had heard of us. Um, we're brand new to everybody in the, in the community. and. Um, I think, you know, you step into it right now. I think that this community's really got behind this team. It's a, most of the guys get recognized when they're out and about, you know, the Salinas or, or Monterey, Carmel in those areas. Um, that says everything. And I think our badges and our crest, which is right here, is, um, is recognized and it's around. It feels like, feels like part of the community already. Yeah, well, I think it's very important for any team to have local players on the team. I have two players that are, are local, you know, Adrian Rebelar and um, Juan Martinez. So both those guys, are, you know, grew up here. Our aim and our dream is to basically, from this whole area, start to, you know, produce and, and get players coming through that can, you know, play for the first team in the end. So uh, it takes a while to build that, obviously. Adrian and, and Walmer both did very well and deserve to be on the roster and deserve to be in the team. That's something that I love, um, that a lot of people here, uh, staff or just fans, you know, friends, that they know where my parents and my family is at sitting every single, you know, every single game. Every home game they're here. My mom, my dad, and my sister, you know, I have a couple friends that also come out every game. And it, it means the world to me. Um, before every game, whether I'm starting or on the bench, I always take a look at them. I just like seeing them that they're there, you know, I feel like why well, I know that they're behind my back, you know, they, they have my back 100%. My parents would obviously sacrifice their time and my sister would sacrifice time from, from work, you know, and doing all the stuff that they probably wanted to do, you know, instead of, you know, being in the car all day, driving to a tournament for a weekend. Um, and seeing it feel like it kind of is paid off, you know, seeing them in the stands, enjoying, you know, the atmosphere, enjoying the, the just the game. Um, so it, it makes me, it makes me like so happy just to see them here, um, see them smiling. Every time you know we go out to warm up, and then you know we kind of have time where we can kind of relax a little bit during warm ups. I kind of look into the stands, and you know I see familiar faces, and I'm like, wow, you know, like wow. Um, people are coming, you know, like people that I've, have seen me grow are coming to watch me play. And honestly, it's a uh, the greatest feeling in the world because you feel that support, that, 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 that support from home, you know. And it's inspiring to, to see these people come and bring their kids, you know, they, they tell me, oh, you know, my son's a big fan and honestly to me that's like, I feel like I'm doing something right. It shows you how, how, how united this club is and how it can bring people together, just seeing all the kids come and then you know, even though sometimes we don't get the results, kids always want to see us and they're inspired by us. It's, it's, it's a motivation, it's a dream for them too, you know. And you know, maybe one day I could be captain to this team, you know, when, once I gain more experience. Um, that would be honestly one of my goals and dreams because it means a lot. This club means a lot to me. I think that, um, you know, we, we had a lot of lessons learned. Some of it were thrust upon us by conditions, by, you know, not having the stadium be done or, you know, the schedule or injuries. So now we have a, um, now we have a beautiful stadium, beautiful facility, um, all those th things that go into it, a lot easier to recruit players. First year was, was great. You know, my job is to keep the guys that I want to keep for sure. Um, some maybe I can't keep through budget uh, situations, but I'm generally trying to keep the same same roster as I can and adding probably five, six, seven players just to enhance and what we're already what we've already done. I think we're going to have a really good side, and um, I do want to commend the guys for sticking together and really not giving up on on the club, myself, fans, all included. You can never promise any anything in any season because you never know what's going to happen, but. 
from my side of things, we're going to do our best to make the playoffs and have a great run. In year one, I learned a lot here in Monterey. I definitely learned that we can do a lot of things amongst ourselves in this locker room. There's a lot of power when we come together. You know, of course, you need the coach to have the identity, the skeleton, but when we come together as a locker room, almost nothing can stop us kind of thing. When we have our mental rep, especially when we're on that winning streak, it was really our mentality streak. The practice session didn't change. It was just like us coming together in those meetings, being like, we're going to win dirty and ugly. If we're at 1-0, we're going to fight and win. So that's what changed, and it showed me a lot that when you have good leadership in a locker room, well, it can lead to some success as well, too. In year one, I learned a lot here in Monterey. I definitely learned that. We can do a lot of things amongst ourselves in this locker room. There's a lot of power when we come together. You know, of course, you need the coach to have the identity that's skeleton, but when we come together as a locker room, almost nothing can stop us. When we have our mental rep, especially when we're on that winning streak, it's really our mentality streak. The practice session didn't change. It was just like us coming together in those meetings, being like, we're going to win dirty and ugly. If we're up 1-0, we're going to fight and win. So that's what changed, and it showed me a lot that when you have good leadership in a locker room, well, it can lead to some success as well, too. I think what we learned is, is a great group. We're going to continue to grow. We didn't think it would all get done in one year, even though you kind of want to do it all in one year. Um, but what, what we accomplished in year one uh, is a great foundation. And I think what you'll see in year two from us, building off that foundation, it's going to be great.